brand new video and today I'm starting a brand new project that I have been meaning to get to for the past few months. Now I am a big fan of the brand Uniqlo and last year back in September I noticed that they had a loungewear set. I don't even know if they still sell the loungewear set because it was so long ago but when I did see it they had trousers, shorts and two styles of tops. And today I'm going to try my very best to recreate the shorts and a crop top. I thought I would bring you along with me for this crochet with me. Before we do get started though, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Okay, before we get started on the actual crochet, I just want to give you a bit of a catch up on where I'm at with the prep for this project. For yarn, I was initially going to use this baby blanket yarn, which was a polyester chenille effect. But when I was going to order, they didn't really have any colours that I liked in stock. Then last week I went out shopping and I found boucle yarn, which I've never used before. And it did look more accurate to the material of the original loungewear. But the only thing that was holding me back from buying it was the fact that it was more of a lightweight yarn. And the lazy girl in me thought that it would take forever to work up. So in the end, I decided to stick with chenille yarn and I have gone with the brand Paintbox Yarns. Then once I had my yarn, I needed to decide what hook size to use. And for the first time in my life, I actually made a swatch. Here's a closer look at the swatch. I experimented with single and double crochet. I'm using US crochet terms here. The double, as you can see, is a bit gappy. So I'm going to go with single crochet. And as for hook size, I tried six millimeter an eight millimeter. The six was a bit too small. I think I can get away with the eight millimeter. So using the eight millimeter for the main and then for any details like the waistband, I think I'm gonna switch to a seven. The pattern for the shorts today is coming from Erin Rayco. She posted a video a few months ago and I'm sure if you watch my videos, then you'll probably know who she is. So I took some notes from that video because I've never made shorts or trousers in my life. I didn't know where to begin but I have adapted it obviously to the materials that I'm using today. And then as for the top, I'm just gonna make it up. <laughs> I only have a very basic plan, but I feel like the most time is gonna be spent on the shorts. cord I used a seven millimeter hook this was like my third attempt I had to play around with yarn tension a little bit what I have learned though with this yarn is that you can't just frog your work or unravel the stitches by pulling the yarn like I normally would instead I'm having to undo the stitches one by one otherwise this yarn sheds quite a bit but even just from this eye cord I really love the texture this is creating You would have seen from the last clip I chained a length that fit around my hips and my bum area and then I have just completed seven rows of single crochet with chain one in between to start my waistband. This is now about three and a half inches wide and it looks a little wide right now because what happens is, if I can find my eye cord here, this gets folded over with the cord inside it so it encases it and then you can use the eye cord as a drawstring. <sighs> I'm all tangled up. So now what I'm going to do is slip stitch the two short ends together to create a big loop. And so this is currently inside out. Ah, okay, like this, like this. So here's my eye cord. I've sandwiched it inside the waistband and I'm using slip stitches to close it up. For the full tutorial though, I will leave Erin's video in the description. I've made my way back to the beginning. I marked the first slip stitch with a stitch marker right here. And then to finish the waistband, I'm not gonna slip stitch in that first stitch I made. I'm gonna slip stitch in the chain one. 
So here's the waistband. I've realised that this drawstring isn't entirely centre, so I'm just going to move that across real quick. The band is very chunky because the eye cord is inside, but I expected that with this weight of yarn. As you can see, I have made some progress on the main body of the shorts, and I've also switched to an 8mm hook. I began with a foundation row of single crochet along the slip stitch seam that you would have seen me do, and then I made an increase row, which was two consecutive single crochets and then two single crochets in the same stitch and that increased row has created this sort of ruffle effect which you can hopefully see but I have just tried this on and it's a bit too big for me I don't think I want to go for the oversized flowy style of shorts just because of the nature of this yarn I think a more fitted style would be more flattering. So I'm going to go back, frog these rows, and I'm just going to stick with even rows of single crochet instead. I've also been considering switching out this eye cord drawstring for just a simple chain, just because the waistband is a little bit bulky. But we're going to put a pin in that, and instead I'm just going to focus on perfecting this shape. Also a little bit of a shameless pattern promo right now, but I am wearing my latest release, which is the Paisley Waistcoat. And this is available across all my shops, Etsy, Coffee, and my website. I just wanted to throw that in there. The only thing now is that, you know when I mentioned about this yarn and frogging? I've now got to frog seven rows at this speed, so this might take a while. So far it's just kind of been like this with rows of single crochet, nothing exciting. But let me take you in closer for a sec to show you how I've been finishing and starting each row. So to finish these even rows I've been slip stitching into the turning chain from the beginning which I've marked here. I would definitely recommend marking this chain because with this yarn in particular it gets a little bit confusing to see. So slip stitch, chain one remove the marker and I'm marking that chain one I've just made where I'm then going to turn my work over, skip the chain, skip the slip stitch and begin crocheting into the first stitch. And by using the turning method it creates a much straighter seam at the back. Luckily with this yarn it covers the seam quite well. Here is what 200 grams looks like so far worked up. I've gone for more of a high-waisted style of short compared to Erin's video so this I have made a little bit longer. I'm gonna keep going until this measures 11 inches I think and then we can get started on the legs. But this is much better without the increases. This is just even rows of single crochet. And as you can hopefully see it is a much better fit. Now I have got enough tummy coverage up here I'm gonna focus on the bottom of the shorts. I used to have no idea how people did this but Erin's video made it so much easier so thank you Erin but essentially all I'm going to do is divide this big space here into two with a chain across. So I've just made my last slip stitch this is the mark for the chain one and then over here is another stitch marker which is opposite halfway. And I know a lot of people ask me where these stitch marks are from. They're very cute and they are from AK Crochets. Onto the chain, I am going to chain a length of three inches, I think. Maybe three and a half. I might go with three and a half just to be safe because I don't want the legs to be too fitted. Or do I? Because it is quite bulky. You know what? I'm good with that. And then I'm going to slip stitch to this marked stitch over here. chain one and then I'm just going to continue with single crochet like I have been doing but when I get to this chain I'm just going to crochet across it. Oh while I'm here let me mark this chain one as well so I know where to slip stitch. I was inspired by new jeans with my hair today. 
Anyway, as you would have seen, the shorts are now complete. I've just got some ends to sew in, which we'll do at the end. The leg portion of the shorts were really easy. I was just using the same turning method. So I got into a bit of a rhythm and I finished both of the legs within a couple of hours, I'd say. In total for the shorts, I used about 300 grams for my size. And now it's time to make myself a matching top. I am going to challenge myself to see if I can make this within 24 hours. But from what I have experienced, this yarn is working up pretty fast. So I don't think it's going to take much time. Fingers crossed. I've decided this is going to be a really basic design so I'm going to make it cropped because of how high-waisted the shorts are plus I'm down to about 200 grams of this yarn so I'm going to try and be resourceful. I'm going to start by making a chain that fits around the widest part of my chest but I'm going to make sure that it's stretched. After making the correct number of chains, I'm slip stitching to the first chain and chaining one. Marked. And then along the chain, I'm just going to start with a row of single crochet. Okay, I've realised I'm also going under where the chains overlap, instead of just going under one chain loop, if that makes sense. Please excuse my little tea in the corner right here. So here's that first row of single crochet that I've just made. I've counted that there is the same amount of stitches as chains that I made at the beginning. I'm going to slip stitch back to this chain one, chain one again, move my stitch marker, turn my work over and I'm just going to continue with the same method that Erin used for the body of the shorts. So skip the chain, skip the slip stitch and carry on making even rows of single crochet in the round but making sure to turn for every row. So I've crocheted just up to my underarm area and I've realised that I need to shape the armholes a little better. So I've tied off my yarn and I'm marking where I want my front and back panels to be and after a little bit of maths I worked out that there is four stitches or two inches in between each of the front and back panel which is the armhole. So I'm attaching new yarn with a single crochet and making a decrease which is just single crocheting two stitches together and then I'm crocheting across the row to the other stitch marker where I'm then going to make another decrease so single crocheting two stitches together and for eight rows total I'm going to be decreasing at the beginning and end of each row making a turning chain one in between each of these rows and also using my stitch markers to mark the beginning and end stitch just so I know where to make the decreases. I just felt like with this yarn it would be better to shape the arms and I can also customise how much coverage I would like at the front and the back of the top here by using this method. With eight rows complete for the front panel I'm just switching to the back and repeating that same process. For the straps I've decided to attach my yarn to the front of the top here and the width is three stitches. I began with a chain one in between every row when I was turning but then here I've skipped the chain one and it's created a little bit of a straighter edge so I think I'm going to miss out the chain one. We are very near the end of the day and I think I've been pretty successful in finishing this within the day. All I'm going to do now is work on both straps. Once this is, I'm going to say like 11 inches long, I'm going to slip stitch to the back section of the top and then all that's left to do is sew in the ends. Mm -hmm. 